Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Later in this week's show, while recent attention has been focused on the aggression of protesters outside LegCo, we remind ourselves of what they're actually protesting about. And we look at who is monitoring police activity and the problems such monitors face. First, though, this week, pro-democracy campaigners have been taking a little walk. The message from the State Council's white paper, issued on 10th June, was simple. Hong Kong has no more nor less autonomy than the central government says it does. The paper appears to have encouraged, rather than discouraged, many to stand stronger for universal suffrage. On Saturday 14th, a seven-day walkathon around the territory kicked off. It's not just saying that the judges have to be patriotic, because when you make patriotism a national policy, what it means, the next step, is that the government is going to tell you what is meant by patriotism, you know, how you have to behave in order to be a patriot, and what is not allowed, uh, because then you become unpatriotic. So you don't even need Article 23 legislation, because, you know, legislation, you have to go through the legislative process, you have to go through a public consultation. Now they can do away with that, because they just issue a white paper and say, well, national policy, that's it. This week has seen cyber attacks said to have originated from mainland China and locally. On the internet platform for the University of Hong Kong's public opinion program, Vote on Political Reform, and on the Apple Daily newspaper. Some of the attacks have been routed through local internet service providers. We are in the present time of the but the cyber attacks are known as distributed denial of service attacks, in which the server of the website is besieged by demands to access the sites. And certain mainstream media are mounting more traditional attacks. Yesterday, the Oriental Group released a special edition magazine reporting that Jimmy Lai, owner of the Apple Daily, had met U.S. former Deputy Defense Secretary Paul Wolfowitz on his yacht in May. The hacking, the, the white paper, all this stuff. Yeah. How serious do you think this is uh, the condition for Hong Kong people? I think this is very serious because the the kind of attack we have, the cyber attack we have, we had never had like this. You know, our system was totally collapsed. You know, uh, you know, it's uh, well, we, it took us more than now, more than 12 hours, which we, we well, 24 hours, we still haven't repaired the system. This is very serious. You know, I think uh, whoever 
is behind this is very serious. They are very afraid. They are very afraid of Hong Kong having our referendum on universal suffrage. I don't know what they are afraid of. <laughs> we have nothing <laughs> but our voice, and still they're so afraid of our voice. So, well, we have to tackle with it, we have to face it, we have to persist. That's it. Due to the cyber attacks, the ability to vote in person on the pop vote on political reform has now been extended to June 29th. Feelings continue to run high over the government's plans to start construction work on developing the Northeast New Territories even before public consultations are over. But villagers, other protesters and some legislators warn the controversy over the protesters' tactics is obscuring the reason for their frustration, including public perceptions of government collusion with developers. Friday, the 13th. And it was not a lucky day for the fifth Finance Committee meeting on approving development funding for the Northeast New Territories. The aim was to approve funds for infrastructure works for new town development at North Kuo Tong and North Fan Ling. Public consultation on the Northeast New Territories development plan started six years ago, but opposition to it remains unabated. Thousands attended the most recent consultation to voice their objections. Even after the government announced revised plans, many concerns remain unaddressed. One involves the perception of conflict of interest relating to the Secretary for Development, whose relatives hold land in Kutong. Finance Committee Chairman Ng Lang Seng, as well as a few other legislators, also have perceived conflicts of interest. Ng is a non-executive director of Smart Tone, which is owned by Sun Hung Properties, which holds large plots of land in the Northeast New Territories. The Town Planning Board hasn't yet reached a decision on the government's proposed outline zoning plan for the two areas, but the government doesn't want to wait. The funding request is for beginning infrastructure works, including preparing the land for housing and excavations. It's not a new strategy for the government in handling such controversial developments. Finance Committee 
答到，即係答無可答。Of course, I don't think it's been thoroughly discussed or deliberated yet.、Uh, the chair of financial committee says he has the the power to draw a line, and of course, I invited the、uh, legal counsel to give an opinion on that. And his response was that、um, he, according to past practices, the chair. Uh, did not really have that、uh, absolute power. Pan Democrats are continuing to urge the government to delay the vote and the project, but the government isn't inclined to back down. If the government is also making this move, I would say that the government is not inclined to back down. This will cause very great difficulties for the government in the future. For the protesters, violent or non-violent, it's simpler than that. The government that should be seen as working for the people is seen by them as working against them and supporting special interest groups. They are the ones who are being accused of being a criminal. They are the ones who are being accused of being a criminal. Welcome back. The protests over the northeast new territories have proved controversial in more ways than one. There have been accusations that undercover police were among the protesters, that excessive violence was used against them out of the public eye, and that journalists were prevented from doing their job at the scene. So, who's really monitoring the police handling of these and planned? Upcoming demonstrations such as Occupy Central. Well, with us in the studio are Lau Yuk Kai of the Hong Kong Human Rights Monitor, Shirley Yam of the Hong Kong Journalists Association, and Helena Wong of the Independent Police Complaints Council. I should also add, we did invite the police to participate in this discussion, but、um, they declined. Shirley Yam, can I just come to you first and just talk about the the media aspect of this?、Um, is this unprecedented? For a journalist to be arrested in the course of doing their duties of reporting an event. Well, the last thing, last time we saw something similar is when、uh, when a newspaper journalist、uh, shout questions out at,、uh, from a president Hu Jintao on the June 4th、um, uh, killing, that he was immediately removed and pushed into to the back,、uh, but. That, that, was it, that, of, that was a couple of years that ago. That was in 2012,、mm. and that is the only case we can recall where a journalist has been taken away I mean, while he's doing while he or she is doing her job. But and in this case, the、uh, the journalist that has been uh, uh, pulled away, he was he was simply there filming the the removal of the pro protester by the police, and the reason they give why why he has to be removed is you are too close. I mean, for any journalist, let's take it as a compliment. I mean, we has to be really close. I mean, if you're not close enough, you're not going. You, the closer you want to be to to get hold of the truth, and the, so why would the police want to stop someone from filming their removal? But can I ask you? I mean, is this,、uh, in your view, a one-off, or is it a reflection of tighter access for the media? To public events, not just demonstrations, but other public events. Well, that has been the case、uh, since the handover. There were all sort of special arrangement made to keep the press at a huge distance from from the uh, from the uh, guests. Uh, it's, it's, it's not just Si Wai Leung. I mean, it, it, it goes back to to Donald Trump. They, they form different kind of restricted area where we can only show the questions to 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 the officers,、uh, to the officials, and and nothing else. Helena Wong, can I come to you?、Yeah. I mean, there is a concern, and I'm sure it arrives on your doorstep, <laughs> that that that、um, there's a more aggressive form of policing of of public protest. What what would be your view of that? There is allegations against the police for the way they handle the uh, uh, demonstrator reporters, and there are allegations and accusing those taking very violent means to try to break in the electrical buildings.、Uh, I can、uh, foresee that there will be um, um, prosecution against demonstrator 
as well as um, complaint against police. We, uh, the IPCC have already received several complaints against, against the police. So in light of that, a member, uh, including myself, suge suggests to the IPCC that we should send a team to go to observe the uh, public order event again to, to get some first-hand experience and perspective as to what has been going on and how the police will handle this kind of gathering. But uh, I'm very disappointed that after some uh, internal consultation, the majority of the IPCC member decided that they will not send uh, a team to go to observe the right. what, and can what I just ask you, um, just more generally, mm. not, not about this mm. specific event, whether it is your perception that police, policing of demonstrations is more aggressive at the moment? I or maybe maybe you think mm. demonstrators are more aggressive. I, yes, I don't want to I think put words it's in your in mouth. Interactive. If demonstrators use um, uh, a higher level of uh, violence in their demonstration, it will trigger a, a, a more violent response uh, from the police side. And of course, there are some allegations that it is the police who take a more <laughs> um, um, uh, violent approach. Then the demonstrator will get. Um, motivated to use more violence means. I think th this will be very interactive. Okay, so I, well, I, I will suggest both sides to, to exercise the highest level of self-restraint. Let, let me ask Lawyer Gaia about this because you, I think it's fair to say, are a veteran observer of demonstrations <laughs> in Hong Kong. Where, what's happening? Is, is, is there more violence coming from the protesters? Are the police just tightening up? I don't know. Well, I think uh, it's on both sides, uh, but uh, I think it's important to notice first, if the society have a lot of grievances, these incidents will increase, and now we have reached almost that point. And then uh, if you look at the police measures, uh, since the handover, they've been tightening uh, their control, say um, their policing of the uh, uh, liaison office of the central government have been so dramatically increased that uh, in the past people can uh, have a demonstration right uh, with the coffin right pass through right in front of that building then it stop people no coffin people only and protesters are not allowed and now they have police operation area and even journalists and others are not now in so you can tell that the police have these kind of ensuring measures and demonstrator got a lot of uh, demonstrators got frustrated that in the past they can do those peaceful things now they cannot do it so there's a lot of demand uh, open the, 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 the can on, okay, let us go. And all these demands easily led to conflicts. Especially those rice conscious people, okay, they would easily put themselves in difficult position if they try to help themselves. In theory, in law, okay, if they, they, have, they are lawful to do that and they right, have been uh, unlawfully restricted, they can, of course, have to do some help, self help. Uh, the law will protect that. But it's very risky, okay, and foreign always develop that way. And, um, but at the same time, this kind of lack of trust and uh, interaction between the two sides has uh, e also made uh, quite a lot of police officers personally involved in it. So sometimes you can tell that uh, they're very angry and, uh, and if you look at their website and other things, I'm, I'm not sure that they can really control themselves uh, if uh, they're not in the public eyes. Uh, the reasons they complain about uh, beat, uh, beating up of uh, protesters uh, arrested in the uh, police vehicles, uh, very consistent with our experience in the past of police beating up up suspects. So um, you're talking uh, about people mm -hmm. being beaten up inside the police vehicles, where taking them last Friday, away from the scene yeah. of the action. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, mm. Helena Wong, let me just come back to you for a moment because the criticism of your organisation mm. is that although the atmosphere, I don't think anybody doubts, mm. is getting hotter. Mm. Um, your, your organization hasn't really stepped up to the mark to reassure the public that there is adequate monitoring of what the police are doing. Maybe I'm not in a good p position to represent the IPCC because uh, maybe the, the new chairman should answer your questions. But as a member, I will say that uh, uh, in, the e in this evening, I and, and other members uh, will go there to observe what's happening outside the electrical building. Uh, of course, I think the public do have this kind of expectation that the IPCC can take a more 
active role in monitoring the police. But as far as I know, uh, the current ordinance uh, does not uh, give the IPCC enough power to uh, play a good role according to public expectation. Uh, for example, uh, the IPCC does not have the uh, investigation power. They are only monitoring what the CAPO has uh, investigated. We are, we are having this two-tier system, but for the IPCC, we do not have um, direct investigation power. So maybe if the public expect the IPCC to play more role, maybe we have to review the existing ordinance. Well, Helena Wong, and both of you, thank you very much indeed. I'm afraid we're out of time, and I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week's show. We'll see you at the same time next week. For now, goodbye.